and her new book, Thanksgiving, the Holiday at the Heart of the American Experience. Author Melanie Kirkpatrick reviews four centuries of Thanksgiving history. And she reveals stories that many of us may not know, and she joins us now to share some of them with us. Melanie, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. It's a pleasure to have you. It's good to be with you, and an early happy Thanksgiving. You as well. Now, many historical figures are mentioned in your book. What antidotes can the reader find in there? Oh, there are dozens of them, so let me tell you a couple of my favorites. One has to do with George Washington, who issued the first national Thanksgiving proclamation. And believe it or not, it was controversial. It was during the first Congress, and a congressman from New Jersey, Elias Budino, proposed a resolution asking Washington to name a day of Thanksgiving. But some of the members of Congress objected, saying that the, under the new Constitution, the president didn't have the authority to do so, that that rightly belonged to the governors of the individual states. And another ob objection was that it was um, a religious matter, and again, prohibited um, under the First Amendment that they had just, the Congress had just debated, though had not yet ratified. Well, Franklin Roosevelt used a holiday to aid in a business decision. Can you share that story with us? That's a marvelous story, too. In 1939, in the middle of the Great Depression, Roosevelt had the idea that he would change the date of Thanksgiving. So he announced that Thanksgiving would be celebrated one week earlier than usual and that there was nothing sacred about the date, so it didn't matter. Well, the country erupted. Of course, many people thought there was something sacred about the date. It, and for all of their memories, it had been uh, the last Thursday of November. So the country um, ended up splitting, and half of the states celebrated on the traditional date, and the other half of the states uh, celebrated on the earlier date, or Roosevelt's date, which came to be known as Frank's Giving, hmm. after Franklin Roosevelt. Now, your book also covers the American tradition of generosity, including corporate generosity. How does that play a role in the November holiday? Well, it, it, Americans, as you know, probably, are the world's most generous people. We give to philanthropy uh, in huge amounts, and not just large numbers, but even people with not a whole lot to spare in the American tradition tend to give to help other people and to good causes in which they believe. And generosity has always been associated with Thanksgiving. The earliest date I could find was 1636 when the people of Situate, Massachusetts had a day of Thanksgiving on which they were enjoined uh, to for the richer sort to help the poorer folk. And you find that even today, uh, throughout our history, on Thanksgiving Day, people go out of their way to help the less fortunate, the poor people in prison, the elderly, those who are, who are alone on Thanksgiving. So when, you know, a modern day American volunteers at a food bank or invites an elderly friend who has no other place to go to join him for Thanksgiving, he's part of a long tradition. What was the biggest lesson that you learned about Thanksgiving in researching for this particular book? The biggest lesson I learned, I think, is that gratitude is still the, the byword of the day. Um, our traditions for giving thanks have certainly changed. The early Thanksgivings were religious in nature, entirely so, and then the, the dinner and a family meal, family gathering to be together, uh, began to take shape at the end of the 17th century. And those have gone hand in hand since then. Used to be within the memory of, uh, I'm sure, some of your viewers, that it was a tradition to go to your house of worship on uh, Thanksgiving morning. That's not so much the case anymore. But um, I discovered that people continue to give thanks around their Thanksgiving tables. And um, it, it's truly, uh, when people say to me it's not a religious <laughs> holiday, that's not quite right. It is a religious holiday, but it's a holiday for people of all faiths and, uh, and of none. And I think what's interesting is that you wrote this book with the intention that it be read out loud 
among the family and friends that you have over for Thanksgiving or any other holiday for that ma matter. Melanie Kirkpatrick, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsmax Prime. It was a pleasure to have you, and happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. You too. And we will be back again at 1 o'clock Monday with JD at the anchor desk, and then back again at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Until then, I'm Miranda Khan. Thanks for watching and enjoy the holiday.